Welcome friends to another r slash pro revenge video. If you want to join me in getting revenge against that difficult YouTube algorithm, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our first story of the day is by Montez Mahal, Pirate Bully Beatdown. Arr. Note, event took place prior to political correctness. We called our school bus driver Pig Leg Pete, but never to his face because he was freaking fierce. Pete was a big dude, had a wooden leg and a jagged scar on his neck that looked like it had been sutured by a preschooler. If we were getting too wild on the bus, Pete would give you a look from his rear view that could make you crap your pants. Everyone had a story about Pete. It was rumored that he'd lost his leg in a motorcycle accident when he ran with a notorious biker gang. My younger brother said he got a scar from a man he killed during a drug deal gone bad. But my brother talked a lot of crap, still does. So it all started when this butt clown named Stan moved to our neighborhood. The Richard Lick referred to his biceps as bionic pythons capable of killing any man instantly. No one likes a jerk. So Stan spent the summer alone. For some dumb reason, Stan headed out for Pete and vowed to take him down with his supreme mind control crap. First day back to middle school, I get on the bus with my brother, nod respectfully to Pete, and try not to stare at his wooden leg. Next stop, Stan gets on the bus, takes one look at Pete, and yells something stupid like, Arr, Peg Leg Pete, is he old Richard as hollow as he old Peg Leg? The bus went silent. Stan walks past us and gives us a thumbs up jerk style. The entire bus knows Stan is about to die. Surprisingly, Pete remained cool and silent, didn't say a word. The next day, Stan gets on the bus and repeats more dumb poop. Arg, Peg Leg beat the pirate with a dildo for a leg. Does your peg keep the ladies happy, Pete? Arr! Since Stan's balls were bigger than his brain, he continued harassing Pete every morning for weeks. No bully beat down in sight until it happened. Pete finally had enough and put the pedal to the metal and sped right past Stan, leaving him stranded at his own bus stop. The entire bus cheered. We waved out the window to Stan who looked shocked, then flipped us the bird. The next morning, our hero Pete whizzed right past Stan once again. Holy crap, we couldn't believe it. The following morning, we were making bets on whether Pete would leave Stan in the dust again. However, this time, Pete stopped the bus and actually welcomed Stan aboard. We never heard Pete speak before, so we hung on to every word. Now, imagine what the devil's voice would sound like, only louder. Pete got up, his massive girth shaking the bus as he got right in Stan's petrified face and said, Ahoy, Stan. It shivers me freaking timbers to hear mommy had to drive you to school last week. Arg. Well, blow me down. Looks like Principal Bacall reserved this assigned seat in the front of the bus just for you, right next to me, matey. Now listen up, Stanley. I'll heave-ho your puny butt off my freaking bus like a bilge-sucking motherfreaker. Arr! He grabbed Stan by his hoodie and threw him down in his newly assigned seat of shame. Stan started bawling like all bullies eventually do. Pete regained his status as our bad butt driver that none of us will ever freaking forget. I looked up Stan after posting the story. I wasn't a bit surprised that he became a jerk gym teacher at a prep school for young men who have not met their full potential. If you were on that bus witnessing Pete say all those words right there to Stan in front of everybody, pick them up and sit them down in the seat, Would you have to keep yourself from laughing, or would you get some kind of secondhand fright and actually be a little bit scared witnessing what was going on? Let me know in the comments down below. This next story is by Plant Sorcery. Your teenager prevents me from sleeping, now you won't sleep either. Some background, my roommate has a 14 year old son who is out of control. He stays up till 4 to 4.30 a.m. playing video games every night, has 19-year-old friends who bring over booze and weed for him, he doesn't go to school, so he sleeps the day away and parties all night gaming. How is a 14-year-old not in school, you ask? His mom homeschools him, aka he logs onto the computer for about 3 hours a week on his own time while his mom day drinks. The house situation, my roommate's bedroom is tucked away in a separate area of the house. Making it a quiet, peaceful place to sleep, my room is right next to the kitchen and front door. The repeat offender, it's one thing if you want to stay up late and you're trying not to wake up the people sleeping, but this jerk not only isn't attempting to be quiet, he slams the cabinets and drawers, he rides his scooter in the kitchen which is very loud on the tile, 
he and his friends slam the front door to go outside to smoke even on weeknights. How is he allowed to have sleepovers on weekdays? I'm guessing it's because the more time friends are over, the less time she has to parent. She doesn't punish him for anything because of laziness, it's easier to just ignore it. Now, I've tried asking him multiple times to not slam things at night. His response? It's more fun to slam. He has no respect or regard for others. His mom doesn't give two craps about how Lady stays up, since her room is nice and quiet. At least, it was. The petty revenge? Now this kid recently got his own cell phone. But before that, he used the house landline or his mom's cell phone. I decided my plan would be to call the house phone after he wakes up at 3 a.m., hoping his mom would wake up to the ring, see that her kid is up too late messing around, and make him go to bed. Then maybe I could get more than three hours of sleep for once. Of course, I can't call for my phone number, so I got a burner. Tonight is the night is what I think to myself, and I go to bed, knowing that if I wake up to the cabinet slamming, I'm calling the house phone. So of course, around 2 a.m., I'm rudely awakened by a huge boom from the kitchen, and it's the kid trying to do tail whips on his scooter. No regard for me, who actually has to work for a living, unlike his mom. So I call the house phone, and much to my dismay, the ringer had been shut off. Plan B. I realize the only way to wake the mom up is to call her cell. So first, I send her a text with the kid's name, acting like I'm one of his friends, and then I call. By this time it's 2.30 a.m. No one answers and I worry that her phone's on silent. I call a second time and all of a sudden I hear her door swing open and she storms out to ask who the heck is calling her cell phone looking for her son. She grills him on who the number is and doesn't believe him when he says he doesn't know. I feel instantly guilty when I hear this but I felt it had to be done. Unfortunately, she still didn't even tell him to go to bed. But after a few more nights of doing this, I'm hoping she's going to get tired of getting woken up by these calls and make the connection that it only happens when her son's up screwing around. Even if she doesn't make her son go to bed earlier after this, it's still worth it. If you aren't going to control your child and allow him to wake me up every night for months, then I think your nights of uninterrupted sleep need to be done. She doesn't work. I do, and I need sleep. If I'm not allowed to sleep, then neither is she. I'm not going to stop calling until the 3 a.m. slamming stops. This might be a lot more controversial than trying to enact some kind of revenge, but I feel like that mom clearly isn't taking proper care of their kid, and at some point, it might make sense to try to get social services involved with an anonymous tip especially if the kid's homeschooling isn't even actually being taken care of properly. Our next story is by NNDNSWR. Teacher refuses to give me attendance. This happened a week ago. So, for some context, I'm a part of a college that was bought by another big college a year after I joined. So while I'm still considered to be part of Batch of X, I have classes with juniors who are in the Batch of XY. Y being the college that bought us. This caused a huge shift in the way things were taught to us and the type of teachers we got. This year, I was told one of my classes for the semester would be completely online, and as I suspected, it was a teacher from College Y teaching me. College Y is more of a science and engineering college. Now, our college was pretty chill about work, attendance, submissions, and the like. We're an arts and design college, and all they cared about before is that we engaged with our work and came up with creative and well-designed outputs. Having been in this frame of mind, I already disliked the teacher assigned to me, who forced us to call her ma'am. We were told specifically, literally on our first day, that we have to call all teachers by their first name, and also was in general a jerk about submissions and assignments. She also had the most ridiculously monotonous voice and was awful at teaching. Her classes were just her reading out from her material and no one responding or even engaging. Not to mention her class was completely different from what the brief had implied the subjects taught to us would be. Already being pissed from previous classes, I joined class to realize that my group was unaware of an assignment given to us the previous week. She called us out on it and says that we won't receive attendance for the previous class because we hadn't engaged with the unit, in spite of my entire group having attended the actual class. 
She then proceeds to give us an hour or so to work on that day's assignment, and my group and I pulled together and completed both last week's and that day's assignment. Here's where our thirst for vengeance bubbles up like an untamable rush of blood in my head. I ask her, as polite as can be, if we could get our attendance considering that we completed the work, albeit late, and also attended the class. She then proceeds to rant for 20 whole butt freaking minutes about how she cannot give me and my entire group attendance, as we hadn't engaged with the class the previous week, and how giving us attendance would be unfair to the rest of the class who had done the work. I pointed out that we too did our due diligence and completed the assignment. We wouldn't mind our grade getting cut for our late submission, but the least she could do is give us attendance. She replies in her trademark monotonous voice that giving us attendance would victimize the rest of the class. And I asked the whole class if anyone had a problem with her giving us attendance. And obviously, no one responded. She continues to BS for another 15 minutes, and the combination of her voice and the absolutely stupid things she was saying caused me to mentally lose it. Now, this online class of mine was taking place on Microsoft Teams and Teams gives the students way more power than we rightfully should have. It allows us to mute and kick other people in the meeting without revealing who the person is doing it. All they see is a message saying, you've been muted. Having prior knowledge of this, I proceed to gleefully mute her every time she tried to talk or respond to another student. The unadulterated euphoria I felt while muting her, when I knew she was about to say something momentarily, when I knew she was just about to reply to someone else, was unmatched by anything I had felt that entire class. Every click of that button sent joy rocketing through my body. Every time a student said, ma'am, I think you're muted, and she went, oh, I didn't know, made my collective hour, day, week, and month. I soon spread my malicious activities with the rest of my group, and we proceeded to collectively mute her for the next 45 minutes. You know what really motivates the majority of people to work hard and succeed? Teachers being overly hard and restrictive on people. You worked hard and finished the work albeit late? Nope, should have done it immediately. Doesn't matter if you put in any effort. Doesn't matter if you try to make things right. You're screwed. Stop asking. That's definitely going to foster some enthusiasm for that field of work. Or really for that class in general. Just any teachers that are like that, I hate. And our final story of the day is by Bertie Bazard. Complain about us to our boss, will you? Okay, we'll remember that. I'm a utilities worker and have been for 25 years. This incident happened about 12 years ago. We got called out to carry out a small repair straight after working a 10 hour shift. So as we were unable to go home and eat, we grabbed some food on the way to the job site. We arrive on site and start carrying out a visual risk assessment and checking the other utilities plans on the laptop while eating our food. Mr. I'm important as freak comes out to tell me to get to work and that I'm not paid to sit on my butt. Having dealt with freak wits like this for years, I completely ignore him and carry on with the laptop checks and filling out the relevant work order, which is compulsory before starting any work as it's a log of all the relevant information, i.e. what time you accepted the job, what time you arrived on site, did you check the plans, etc. Unbeknown to me, Mr. I'm important as freak has called our office to say that we've been on site for over an hour and we're sat on our butts having a picnic in the work van. Bear in mind that we only received the job 40 minutes prior to this and traveled 15 miles to get there, so it's physically impossible for us to have been enjoying our picnic for an hour. Anyway, we complete the job and head home, get called into the manager's office the following day to ask what had gone on and to inform us that we had a customer complaint against us. My only response was to tell him to check the vehicle tracker and the laptop log and he'd have all his questions answered. He called a few hours later to say that he suspected it was BS, and the log proved that when Mr. I'm important as freak said we were having a picnic, that I was in fact working. Now to the sweet revenge. Approximately two weeks later, we have a job on the very same street, replacing the old steel water mains with new plastic pipes. As part of this work, we have to cut off supply for maybe an hour or two, but we always let her drop the customers to say that their supply may be interrupted between the hours of 9am and 5pm. Needless to say, Mr. I'm important as freak had his supply cut off at exactly 9am and restored at 4.59pm. 
He came out multiple times asking when it would be back on. My reply each time was, did you not get the letter about the supply interruption? The rest of his neighbors were off for maybe 35 minutes. Mr. I'm important as freak got the full eight hours for being a jerk. If the utilities people are coming out to fix whatever utilities, whether it's electric, whether it's water, the last thing you want to do is go up to them and berate them over something. These are the people there to fix something vital for your household, and you want to go and berate them? Give them a reason to get frustrated, to want to get petty? Definitely not the area. If you're that upset, call in an anonymous complaint. Don't give them a face to hate and a person to get revenge against. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.